What's up everybody, it's your boy Wes Grant and you're watching Sub Urban Nerd, this channel where I give my nerd views on today's nerd news. Well, I'm about to hit you guys with some uh, not so shocking news, but I'm going to first give you guys the weekend box office report, alright? First thing, Justice League. Justice League, it didn't do as good as the Warner Brothers probably had hoped or DC. It, all right, first off, let me just tell you, this thing was estimated at first to be making like 120 million, which isn't that great, but it's still pretty good. 100 million is pretty good for any movie, but for a superhero movie, you know, it's it's the par. Um, let's just say it like this: Batman vs Superman made 166 million. Okay. Um, Suicide Squad made like 127 million, I believe. Wonder Woman made 103 million. Okay, but it said it went on to break records and make like I don't know 800 million, something like that. This movie that had Batman, Superman that people didn't really know, but spoiler alert, yeah, he's in there. Uh, Cyborg, Aquaman, The Flash, Batman. It had all of them, and this movie made 96 million dollars. Just shy short of a hundred million, but still 96 million, which in other movies is good. In superhero movies, it sucks. It's not good at all. So that was number one. Number two came in a movie called Wonder. I think it's like an animated movie, but it came in uh, second place at twenty-seven point oh five million dollars. Thor Ragnarok still chugging along, making that money. It it made a uh, twenty-one point seventy. 21.78 million dollars with a domestic total of about 250. So, um, fourth place we got Daddy's Home 2. It came in at 14.8 million. And then last place we got Murder on the Orient Express. That came in at 13.8 million. So that's your box office. Which sort of leads us in to the first topic, and that is Justice League. Justice League failing so bad. It's not even, I, I like, people are wondering, do they reboot or whatever? And I have a, a couple theories of why this movie felt so bad. Number one, critics. People like the, the the critics that watch this movie ahead of time. The scores have not been good. Rotten Tomatoes, it's at, it was at thirty nine, whatever when I when when the weekend came, about thirty nine percent. I think thirty eight percent when I looked. That's not a good score for any movie, let alone a superhero movie. So that's the first thing they had against them. Second of all, they didn't have confidence in it themselves because if they did, they wouldn't hold the embargo as far as critics talking about it until like days before the movie came out. When Wonder Woman was coming out, everyone knew that movie was great. They were talking about it months ahead. They screened it months ahead. Everyone was talking. They just they, they were saying it was great, but they just couldn't you know say nothing about it. So when people see that, or people that, you know, like, into movies like that, like me, see that, you already know that mm, something might not be right. Next, one of the other things they had against it, Ben Affleck, he, he's wishy-washy. They ask him, oh, yeah, I'm down, you know, we're not just league. They ask him again, he's like, yeah, you know, I guess we'll have to wait and see. I don't, I'm not too sure. So it's like, people are wondering, like, uh, is the movie we're going to see that has Ben Affleck as Batman, is, does that gonna, is that going to matter anymore if, if he's not going to be Batman? So, like, if he's not so even enthusiastic to be Batman, why well, should be enthusiastic to see this movie? So, as far as that, I think that might have hurt it a lot, too. Plus, on top of that, their marketing. Like, I, I think I like the second trailer. The second trailer was when uh, Aquaman was surfing, Jason Momoa was surfing down and through a building on a parademon. That looked awesome. That looked cool. But after that, the other trailer seemed sort of like the same thing. It didn't get me on board, like, oh, yeah, I'm looking so forward to seeing it. That trailer when he surfed through the thing you saw for the first time, yes, that was cool. After that, it's just a bunch of explosions, slow motion, and all this stuff. It does nothing, really. One of the other things that had uh, was against Warner Brothers is their track record. Their track record is not too good. Batman vs. Superman, um, Justice League, you know, Batman vs. Superman, you got Suicide Squad, the only movie that got pretty good critical reviews was Wonder Woman. That's the only thing. And they banked on it hard on this. Why? Because the first trailer didn't really have anything about Wonder Woman. After Wonder Woman came out and killed it, next trailer was the first scene, her going to a bank 
whooping some ass. So tell me how, like, you, you, you pushed it. But except it's like, their marketing, I don't know. Like, people just didn't have the faith in this movies after what they saw from the other movies. You know what I'm saying? Wonder Woman's side apart. Everything else, critical ratings, not too good. I personally did not like Batman vs. Superman. If I had to give it a grade, I'd give it a C. Because there were moments, you could see. But they tried to put too much in. Tried to cram way too much in as far as, you know, uh, the death of uh, the Beth death of Superman, the Justice League. You had, like, just so many different plots and ideas that they had. They were just squishing it in. And that's why it didn't work. And plus, you know, the, the, the tone. Like, people say it was too dark. Um, Christopher Nolan's Batman was dark. This one was, like, I didn't really care too much... If it was dark or not. It's just about the story. If it was dark and it had a good story, had a good plot, uh, the characters were made more sense and weren't stupid, we would get, be getting great reviews. But it didn't. And that's, one, and that's one of the major things. On top of that, because Zack Snyder sort of did still have his hands in this one, and people didn't like Batman vs. Superman, you know, they weren't looking forward to seeing this. Even though... You know, Joss Whedon took over. Yes, he took over, then he added some jokes. But except from what I'm hearing with critic reviews, is it sort of seemed out of place. Like, they were trying too hard to be funny. They were trying too hard to be lighthearted. And when you're trying to, trying, to, trying to fake it, when you're faking it, people don't like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you go to a place and, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Like, no, it's, you, you, you can see that you're faking it. So don't do that. And that's what Warner Brothers need to learn. I'm hearing that there are good things about this. And I got my tickets for D-Box tomorrow. So, you know, like, where I'm shaking and moving or whatever. That's what the seats are going to be for. But I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this movie. So as far as the reason why I think it failed, or all those reasons I just gave you. You know what I'm saying? The, they didn't have faith. The marketing. Ben Affleck. Uh, the, the track record. Zack Snyder. All that played into one thing where it just failed. And I, I think it might make its money over the um, holiday weekend because it's five days or whatever. So people go out to see movies, Jewish. I mean, not, not Jewish, that's Christmas. Or, but everybody goes out to see movies, you know, because all the families are together. So it might make a decent amount. It might not drop that much. Hopefully, maybe they only they, maybe they make like $70 million, You know what I'm saying? That's still good because if you don't want it to drop like no, no 7% or whatever because that's just going to be really bad for Warner Brothers in general. And then they might start thinking actually about rebooting. But... Well, girl, also fact, sorry, I went on a tangent, but I'll go on to the next news and kind of get it out of way as fast as possible. Um, going into that, the next nerd rundown news, uh, Zack Snyder uh, hasn't seen the Justice League movie yet either. Uh, he actually went online or tweeted or something like that, basically saying that he hasn't seen it yet, and he would have wished that he could have made the movie, uh, completed it himself, so we could have seen what he had, which I'm not too sure about. Maybe I want to see it, maybe I didn't. I didn't like what he did with Batman vs. Superman, so why would I kind of look forward to seeing what he did with Justice League? But then again, people learn. People learn, and maybe he would have got it right. Um, but he hasn't seen it. We'll see. Uh, he'll probably see it later. Uh, like I said, um, next on the Nerd Rundown, we got The Incredibles 2. Uh, Elastic Girl and Mr. Incredible. Uh, like, I seen a trailer. There was a, like a teaser trailer, which is like a minute or something long. And it just shows, uh, you know... Jack Jack going around with the eye beams, just all just slices, be beaming up everything. Then you know, Mr. Incredible picks him up and it shows it to him. Uh, you know, lifts him up, looks at the baby, and the baby shoots a beam straight through his, you know, head and cuts off the hair. You know what I'm saying? So it was cute, but it wasn't that much. You didn't see no more. So it wasn't really a trailer. It's more like a teaser. But the storyline is that basically it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be Mr. Incredible, Mr. Mrs. Elastic, basically watching him, watching her baby, uh, staying at home, being a stay at home mom's for the for Jack Jack. Which, I, it doesn't really give them much plot. You know there's going to be more that happens than that, but they're not giving anything away yet. Um, uh, the movie's supposed to be coming out June uh, June 15, 2018. And it's going to have all the voices from the from the original movie. And a couple, a little bit more of, like, some new people. Just, I think two more or whatever. But later on, when we get more news, I'll definitely let you guys know. Uh, next on the Nerd Rundown, we've got uh, THR reports that uh, Constantine Film... Uh, the the company behind the Resident Evil films, uh, they have gotten the rights to the they have they have gotten the right, film rights to Danger Girl. Um, it's a hit nineteen uh, nineties comic book. Uh, the, the it's still a title. The title's still in development, so they don't have any plans. But um, they plan on producing a TV and a film or film and TV series. Um, as far as that, if you don't know what Ga Danger Girl is, basically it's a group of uh, female uh, secret agents that are so sort of like um, 
who get into uh, adventures like uh, you've got James Bond, you've got Charlie's Angels, Indiana Jones kind of esque. Uh, if for, for the younger kids, it's basically like Totally Spy. Um, and I don't know uh, another series. I don't know if it's, if it's live action or whatever. It, it probably is gonna be live action. But hey, I'm I want to see another thing sort of like Charlie's Angel. I, I want to see that because you know we need to see some more female superheroes. And you know they're um, after Valkyrie. If you haven't seen Thor Ragnarok, watch it. But Valkyrie and other Marvel females actually went up to um, to Kevin Feige and kind of said that they want to have a, a badass group of like sort of like female Avengers. So, like, I gave my ideas as far as how I thought that could work, um, as far as, I don't want it to just be, like, how you say, um, the men are out or sick or something like that, and the women have to take over only because the men can't do it. I want it to be, like, something like, say, a, a, a um, Lady Death or, or someone, or an Enchantress or someone from, like, Asgard or whatever, that brainwashes all the men, and then turns them bad, and makes them into slaves, and then these females have to go against them, and beat the actual superhero guys, in order to save them. That would be kind of badass to see, and show how strong they are, by not making it that they're only there, and only the superheroes, because the guys are out of the way. I think that would be a great idea, as far as, you know, Valkyrie and the rest of them. And they've actually had a group in the comic books, where Valkyrie, uh, uh, uh Scarlet Witch, and uh, Black Widow and all of them kind of joined together and, and actually joined in a, as a group. Uh, um, I don't know what the name of it is, but uh, I will try and find it out later. But regardless of the fact, that's pretty much how the comic books, like how they want to do it. The, that's what the storyline is as far as the Danger Girls. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing some new female superheroes or like female spies or movies, like, you know, starring roles like that. You know, I didn't see Atomic Blonde, but I hear... Uh, okay, I'll definitely try and see it, though. Um, next, last thing on a nerd run now, we've got... The Avengers Infinity War trailer will be in the front... or Yes, in the front of Last Jedi. So that's what we gotta wait for. The Last Jedi to come out for us to see the trailer for Infinity Wars that we've been waiting to see for so long. But um, that's pretty much it. That's uh, I tried to cram it down as much as possible. Again, my opinions on, you know the Justice League and why it, it failed. But I'm definitely going to give you guys my review. I'm going to watch it tomorrow, so watch out for my review. Maybe I'll attach it to uh, attach it to this, so most likely I'll probably put it on here if you guys are watching the video later. So uh, remember, I'm Wes Grant. You've been watching Suburban Nerd. And uh, remember to uh, remember to like, to tag, share. Remember to subscribe. Uh, check out the playlist over here. Well, check out the... Uh, subscribe. Subscribe. Check out the um, yesterday's uh, nerd or last week's nerd uh, nerd news. Check out the playlist and check out Thor Ragnarok or, or sorry Justice League's uh, trailer or movie review when I see it. Thank you. I'm Wes Grant. You've been watching Sub Urban Nerd and you've just been notified. Catch you guys later.